Hello there, my friends. Chris Marcus here with you for the Stock Pulse Network on Tuesday, October 2nd. And excited to have a special guest, Dave Transler of Investment Research Dynamics, who, in my own personal opinion, is one of the finer minds out there covering the markets. Um, and especially if you've been following things like the real estate market, the Tesla situation, gold and silver and others, Dave has really been ahead of the curve on a lot of those. I like reading Dave first and then hearing about it second in my Wall Street Journal alerts. So Dave, it's great to have you on here today. Uh, check in on the markets, hear how everything's going. And before we get started, how are you today, my friend? I'm doing well, thank you. It's good to see gold up 16 bucks today. And uh, it's, it's great to be here. Thanks yeah, for having me well, on. Perhaps we could start there because as you mentioned, gold and shockingly enough, even silver have gone up in recent days, which has not happened much um, of late. Certainly uh, a lot of things going on in the gold market. We have the world walking away from the dollar. We have the COT report, however accurate or not that may be, suggesting that it looks like after being short for many years, the banks, uh, at least according to the report, appear to now be getting long medals. Um, so what are your thoughts? Is anything changing yet? Again, has been interesting to see some somewhat bigger moves up, not any shockers lately, but what are you seeing and what's your take on where things are? Well, there's a, I think the biggest factor today in, in the move in gold is, is what's going on in Italy. It's kind of the, the, the financial and economic meltdown over there. I mean, you know, Greece blowing up is one thing, Greece is small. It's a small problem that can be fixed and addressed easily by just printing a little bit of money, which is what they did. Uh, Italy is a much bigger, <laughs> much bigger situation, a much bigger problem. Um, and I think that's probably the biggest factor moving gold. Certainly, it has nothing to do with the dollar because the dollar is up quite a bit today. And given that China is closed for this whole week to celebrate, um, I think it's called the Golden Week. Is, is the celebration over there. So it, you know, again, I, I do not believe in this theory that the Chinese have pegged the price of gold to the yuan. And certainly a day like today shoots a big hole in that theory. So, um, you know, the, the fundamentals underlying the gold market have always been strong and they've been getting stronger this year. So, um, you know, historically during Federal Reserve interest rate hike cycles, gold has this, and this goes back to I believe the mid '70s. This study that I that I saw or am familiar with, um, gold typically does its best during <coughs> periods when the Federal Reserve is is hiking interest rates. So obviously we've got that going on right now too. I mean, the reason being is that. The market assumes that the Fed is way behind the, the curve on inflation. And since we already know that the inflation number the Fed uses based on the CPI index is nonsense, um, I think most people out there understand and feel that inflation is much higher, many multiples of what the government is trying to tell us that it is. In fact, the interesting aside here, I was at the grocery store, the, the Queen Supers, you know that one on 9th and, and uh, Corona on Capitol Hill. And I always use the self-checkout and a woman was next to me doing the self-checkout and just unsolicited. I mean, I'd never seen her before. She looked over at me. She goes, God, I can't believe how expensive groceries are now. Now, certainly yeah. if I told her that, that Jerome Powell is out there telling us inflation's 2%, she might've hit me over the head with her with her uh, sack of milk and eggs. So, um, and anyway, to circle back to the gold thing, I think the market understands that inflation is much higher than what we're being told. Um, and it's, it's consistent with the price of gold moving higher during interest rate tightening cycles at the Fed. So, um, and you know, probably the biggest factor right now is the, is the large 
short position by the speculators, primarily the hedge funds, that, you know, that based on the allegedly accurate commitment of traders report, the last one that, you know, their, their situation didn't change much. Um, again, this is off the top of my head. I think the commercial category as a whole got a little bit net longer in gold. Right. right. Um, and again, it gets back to, uh, as I, as I, um, detailed in my mining stock journal, which, which you receive, um, a couple mm -hmm. issues ago, I, I suggested that the average cost entry on the short position by the hedge funds is somewhere in the 1215 to 1220 range. And that, that, that level would be defended by the hedge funds um until they could no longer defend it so today i think we're 1209 on gold or 1210 or something um it'll be interesting to see if you know we've had a couple bounces up to the 12 15 to 1220 area that have been immediately rejected and, and sent gold back down a little bit below 1200 so it'll be interesting to see if um we get you know another attempt at that level, and and if it breaks through the 1220 level and can hold, I think you'll see rampant, massive short covering by the hedge funds that'll drive the price even higher, and then their algos will will kick in to um, chasing momentum higher, and and we'll see a cycle here where the hedge funds go net long, and the commercials feed their long position into the hedge funds. So. Um, Again, I, I think I've always been pretty clear that there would it would probably take some sort of unexpected event to cause gold to shoot through that level. Like um, the type of event I'm talking about is an unexpected tweet from Trump. I mean, the last time gold shot up, and this is when gold shot up through 1300 several months ago, was when Trump started bashing the Fed on their interest rates hikes. Right. I don't know if you remember that. You probably do. I, mean, yeah. I think gold was up over 20 bucks after that tweet hit. And that's, you know, it could be an unexpected Trump tweet. Who knows? The guy's a loose cannon. Uh, it could be even more bad news coming out of Italy, a continuation of this. And I suspect we're going to see a lot more bad news coming out of Italy. So um, that's kind of, you know, what I see driving gold right now. Yeah, and um, I'm glad you mentioned that because obviously the coverage of the COT report has <laughs> grown in recent years. Now, certainly for anyone who's who has actually looked at a COT report, you need a little you need like a PhD level class to actually sift through the thing. And so my understanding over what I've learned over the past decade, and I'm curious because I consider you an expert on this topic, is that essentially the banks had a short position that has been, and again, this is at least according to the COT data, which if someone wants to assert that the data that's being published isn't completely accurate, I'd certainly be able to entertain that. Yet at least going based on what we've seen, my understanding has been that essentially the banks for years have been short metal Although, because they know where the stops are, they know these patterns that the hedge funds are reading, that basically taken advantage of that, and by manipulating the price using some of the high-frequency trading algorithms and other such tricks that um, actually was interesting. We For years, we saw that Deutsche Bank got caught. And I noticed Rory Hall of the Daily Coin, he had an article published by uh, Gata today Apparently, Bank of Nova Scotia now just got caught and fined doing the same thing. So is that interpretation that that's how it's been going and now the banks have been able to essentially pawn this short position off to the hedge funds, is that correct uh, from your perspective of what's going on and for people who are trying to understand what this report is really indicating? Well, I, you know, I think the banks are long, net long gold and silver futures right now because they want to make money on it right. and they can make money on it and at the same time continue capping it because they'll make money at it at the expense of the hedge funds when the hedge funds have to cover their short position 
but they'll they'll feed their long position out into the market, clip a big profit, and then when the hedge funds revert to chasing momentum higher, the banks will go net short again. I mean, since I've been doing this, the precious metal sector going back to 2001, I mean, there's been plenty of evidence call it tracks in the snow, if you will, because there's plenty of people out there who won't believe it until J Jamie Dimon comes out and actually admits, yeah, we, we manipulate the gold market on behalf of the Federal Reserve and the US government. He'll and never quick, do that. Quick, quick question there. I'm assuming Jamie Dimon isn't getting your vote if he runs for president in the next election? He won't be getting anyone's vote if he runs for president. He's got too many skeletons buried in the claw. I mean, you think they they dig up crap on Trump and this this poor guy Kavanaugh? You know, I know stuff about Diamond that'll come out <laughs> yeah. that I'm not at liberty to share. But um, at, at any rate, I mean, the name of the game is the Western governments and central banks. In order for them to maintain the dollars hegemony as the reserve currency in order for the US and the EU to continue issuing paper paper liabilities, you know, sovereign debt, treasury debt, in order for them to keep that Ponzi scheme going, they have to keep a lid on the price of gold. Because if the price of gold were allowed to trade freely and let's say it it, you know, they stop manipulating it tomorrow and over the next month the price of gold resets up to three thousand bucks a share, which no one knows for sure where it would reset if it was a freely trading market, but let's just throw that number out there. Think of how many people in this country would go, wow, something's wrong. What, what are they, what have they been lying to us about? I mean, essentially, you know, to the extent that gold is and has been the cornerstone, the foundation of any monetary and economic system going back to the Roman em empire and probably before that, um, if they're going to perpetuate and propagate a fiat-based financial system, they have to put a lid on the price of gold. So the banks have been, you know, the, the primary banks, Goldman Sachs, JP Morgan, um, Scotia sold their, their metals business for whatever, you know, for whatever reason, I don't know why. Did they actually sell it? I know they were trying to. I thought they were unable to find anyone. They might not have. I, I don't know the status of it. I don't really care. Um, Citicorp now is 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 actively involved in um, manipulating the market. And you can tell who the big manipulators are if you just go to the OCC um, bank, bank re reports that come out, I believe, quarterly. And just look at the OTC derivatives positions. You know, Citibank went from nowhere, or Citicorp went from nowhere to now. I think it's the second largest derivatives position in, in uh, silver. So, um, I mean, it's it's no secret to people who have been involved in the sector for a long time and have studied it that um, the banks are or act as agents on behalf of the Federal Reserve the ECB, the Bank of England, to to try and, and keep a lid on the price of gold. So, um, you know, I I don't think the banks have changed their position on that. I think they're just, I, my feeling on why the banks have gone long and have gone net long is that, it, it, you know, the, the way things are unfolding right now on the global scene, with every, when you consider everything that's going on, I'm sure the banks knew that if if they were to drive the price down like this and and suckered the hedge funds into getting short, that at some point, you know, they weren't going to be able to hide some of the fundamentals that are the fundamentals that drive the price of gold higher. So why not take advantage of it? Um, yeah. You know, if, if for people who might not believe that the banks are involved, then just ask yourself, how come the CFT? How come the CFTC? turns their head the other way when when they've been presented with all this evidence of manipulation. And that's been going on for as long as I've been involved in this sector. The CFTC turns its head the other way. Well, it's interesting you mentioned that because yesterday actually uh, we are, our staff here has been in contact with the CFTC trying to get someone from the CFTC on to explain what you and I can't figure out. So um, 
we'll see how that goes. Um, but one of the things that you mentioned about uh, this. Just jump in here really quickly for a second, because this is a really important point to point out. If you look at the ratio of gold and silver futures, the, just the open interest in it, it's many multiples the amount of the underlying gold and silver that gets reported every day as being available for delivery into those contracts in the COMEX vaults. All right. So, and I, I haven't run the numbers in a while, but usually, I mean, usually with, especially with silver, it's like, you know, the open interest in silver futures contracts, even for the current front month, it's three to four times represents three to four times the amount of physical silver that's that's reported as being available to deliver. That type of ratio does not exist in any other commodity, not even close. In no. fact, the CFTC will, will start to crack down on banks if, if an open interest position is 120 to 130% of of the amount of oil that's available for delivery into those contracts. So you have to ask yourself, why do they let these massive open interest relative to the amount of the underlying commodity available to, to be delivered? Why do they let that persist in, in the, in the gold and silver futures market and they, and they enforce the regulations in every other type of contract? I mean, that right there to me is evidence enough. That's, that's an example of the tracks in the snow that, that point towards the scheme. Yeah, I, I wish I could disagree with any of that. Um, and again, hopefully we'll be able to get someone from the CFTC on. They're not going to be able to. They're not going to comment. <laughs> I mean, it is interesting. I actually did email the commissioners, I think it was back in 2011, saying that, you know, I'm working on a trading floor. I'm involved in the markets. And this is what I've come to believe. Uh, it's what a lot of other people, is there any comment? Interestingly, Bart Chilton. Yeah, Bart Chilton. You know what Bart Chilton's doing now? He's like in charge of marketing derivatives for one of the Wall Street firms. Yeah, so he was there. they he they were good cop, bad cop, and Chilton was the good cop on the committee back then. And that's when the committee was was chaired by um, Gensler. Yeah, the 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 ex Goldman Sachs guy who originally had been in line to succeed John Corzine as CEO, but then when Corzine was pushed aside brutally, um, what was that dude's name again, the, the Goldman guy? Gensler? Yeah, Gensler. That, that's when Gensler got pushed aside and they threw him in as, as chairman of the, the CFTC because he could, he could serve some use to them there. Yeah, it's certainly a, a fascinating element to this whole story. Um, one other element that you did mention earlier, and I would like to end with as our last question today, but obviously we talked about the things going on in the COT report and why they might be happening. Um, but you also touched on the inflation and the Federal Reserve, which is really driving a lot of the reason that people are going to metals. And one of the things that I thought was interesting last week at the meeting, and then again, I saw an article this morning, Powell pledges the Fed will act with authority if inflation spikes. And I was a little bit baffled by that one because I remember, uh, I believe it was June or July, because I wrote an article about it, how the CPI came out at 2.8% year over year, which is a bit above the 2% that mandate that the Fed has, how they actually even came up with 2%, I'll save for another day. But I'm going over to the CPI uh, tab on the Bureau of Labor Statistics and here, news release from September 13th. In August, the CPI for all consumers increased by 0.2% seasonally adjusted which that's the month over month figure and says rising 2.7% over the last 12 months. So <laughs> maybe I'm missing something here, but he's saying he's concerned about inflation. They're going to act yet. It's already past their target. Um, it seems like the canaries lying there in the coal mine yet. What am I missing here? And 
Again, is this just reason again why it'd be wise to pay attention to what's going on here and some of the inconsistencies and go along with the banks and a lot of the other central banks and funds that are buying gold and silver? Um, but any thoughts? I mean, it's like we're not waiting for inflation to get out of control anymore. And these are, again, with the government numbers that I think we both agree are generous at best. So any final thoughts on that one? Yeah, well, <clears throat> first of all, I think out of control means, you know, where it spikes up over four or five percent. But if you look at, <clears throat> again, this is out of memory, but I believe that when Powell had his, his uh, jumped into the second ring of the three ring circus and had his media um, press conference, I think the Fed, I think they said that the longer term, the, the outlook for inflation from now through 2021 was 2% or something like that. So, I mean, look, they, they can make that number say whatever they want it to say for the most part. So I don't think, you know, I don't think Powell's really worried about, you know, the CPI jumping up to 2.7%. 2.7% in the context of of historical real inflation rates really wouldn't be that out of control anyway. So I think we all know inflation is much higher than 2.7%. So. Yeah. Yeah, and given the policies going on, uh, certainly you have a trade war and, and driving prices up even further. Um, so it will be fascinating to see how all of this unfolds. Again, I'm grateful for you coming on today and shedding some light on all these topics, which aren't always easy for people to understand. But I think you really do a great service that you know, for honest people who want to know how to keep their money safe and invest it wisely, um, your big help in this industry. So if you could share how people can find you and uh, the great website where you do all of your writing and the journals. Well, thanks for the feedback, Chris. I appreciate it. And uh, my blog is investmentresearchdynamics.com. And on that blog, there's links to my mining stock journal and my short sellers journal. So um, the short sellers journal, especially, uh, and, I, and I, I, I trade most of the ideas that I recommend. Um, so, you know, myself and the subscribers that, that get involved in those trades, we've been doing really well lately. So, and I expect that to continue. Yeah, well, I, I- mining stock journal, those ideas are gonna come to life again here soon also. Yeah, I actually got the two new ones that are in my queue to go through today. It's great stuff that you're putting in there. Um, Thanks, and again, I, I, like, that. I like that, you know, again, as a former options trader, I think there is always a difference between throwing out ideas and actually putting capital behind them and trading them. So folks know that when you're reading Dave's work, that that is the case. And you can check him out at Investment Research Dynamics. Uh, thanks again, as always, for being here, Dave. We'll have you on again soon to keep us posted on what's going on. And with that said, again, appreciate you, and we'll talk to you soon. Thanks, Chris. We'll speak to you soon. All right, will do. Take it easy, my friend.